I transitioned from that internship into that job. So what were you doing as, a, as your job? What was your job mm-hmm. details? Job was fun. Uh, the first couple of years, we were working on small spacecraft. And our objective was to build car seats for nanosats because you want to make sure that your satellite gets there safely on that bumpy ride out of the atmosphere. That was fun. I got to travel around. I got to meet a lot of interesting people and stand up some small, now <clears throat> large space companies. The next opportunity I had was working on commercial aviation. So, you know, when you fly to point A, from point A to point B, you ever wonder how you might have left late but got there on time? Because we optimize the trajectories for different situations when you're going through the neighborhood. So NASA, FAA, private research all get together to make sure that you can fly safely and efficiently. And so my publications are on flight trajectory optimization for the commercial airspace. So what exactly does that mean? That means that you are taking a left when you should have been taking a right so you can get there quicker? It means you get a shortcut. You're taking a shortcut. You're taking a shortcut. So you, you mapped out the, the road map in the sky yeah. to see what the most efficient way of travel is. Yeah. Yes. So that, that was, is, means a big effort, right? We got a lot of players on the team, but that was essentially what all of my research was on and looking at when you're getting these shortcuts, how do you minimize the fuel burn so you can reduce emissions? So you, you're doing the emissions? Are you like studying wind patterns and all this too, right? Mostly maneuvers. Okay. Like what kind of maneuvers can you give the pilot so that they can, you know, shorten the route and maybe reduce the speed from at certain points so that you can fly more efficiently. So what, what, how is the process of doing that? What do, you, what do you have to study to know that information? So that comes down to um, radar locations. Right, kind of like where all the points are, what air traffic control is doing, how much traffic is there, and then like you said, weather, things of that nature. I mean, we were really looking at large scale simulations and then putting forth ideas about, well, if we make it a little bit more efficient here, then that's gonna mean this there. So this is an executive position? No. It feels like it. No, I'm a worker bee. So at I mean, it sounds really important, right? Yes, like but this I was is a an very worker bee. This is a very important position, especially when you talk about commercial airlines. How much is somebody in this space making at the position that you were at at the time? Oh my goodness. I remember it was literally like 100,000 and one cent. Like literally 100,000 <laughs> cent. Cent. Because, yeah, I, because I was obsessed with this idea of making six figures, right? And mm-hmm. so every single year, I kept a list of every single thing that I would do And so this is like a little bit of like a work suggestion, right? I would take what the organization's objectives were. I would look at what I was doing and I would break out, okay, I went to this seminar, this this supports this professional development goal. I went to this thing in the community that supports this goal. And I would have the receipts. And so whenever my supervisor went to review me, I'm like, well, this is what I did. This is how many people I impacted. This is how much time I spent. And then here are all my publications, all my conferences. How could you not mark me exceptional? Because I wanted those promotions. Mm. So, and then that's the last job that you had at NASA? Or you had another job? That was the last job I had at NASA. And what, so what made you leave NASA? I was going into the community and I was talking to kids. And I was so excited to talk about the work that I had worked so hard to be able to represent. And all they wanted to do was talk about who I was and how I got there. And I realized that there was a gap because those students were like, wait a second, you mean this wasn't what you always wanted to do? You mean you didn't know how you're going to pay for college, but you did it? And oh, by the way, you're wearing a pink blazer and you're wearing makeup? How does all this fit together? And after going to school after school, I was like, there's a real disconnect here, right? Like, I can't go into these classrooms and have the kids looking at me like I'm an alien. I want to normalize this. So how do I create a way to found a business that helps people realize that they can do this too? So you started a business. I had the idea. And I say it that way because, once again, I didn't have successful family members that I could go to for money or people that thought that my idea was going to be anything. And so I started the idea and it took me two years from having that idea to actually getting enough traction to transition from my job to run the idea full time. What, what was that, that transition like? You said that you were the worker bee, but now you're the entrepreneur. 
we spoke to uh, Robert Smith, who comes from engineering. Yeah, yeah. And um, that was one of those things for him as well. It was, all right, I'm, the engi- I'm an engineer by trade, but now I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a CEO. What were you going through during those two years? What were you trying to figure out? Who, who were you leaning on to figure out how do I navigate this new space that I am, I'm in? I'm already a rocket scientist, but an entrepreneur, this is new. Yeah, well, one of the things that happened was I realized how expensive it was to be knowledge poor, right? And I had given up um, the lease on my apartment, which now all the way my parents are like, what? Like what? Like my mom was just like, there's just, you mean you're giving up your job as a Nazarite like to, for this business? And I'm like, I'm going to be bigger than this business. You just don't know. And so I got up an hour earlier and an hour later and I started reading about successful people. And one of the things that I noticed was a lot of people had the destination in mind, but they had no idea how they were actually going to get to that point. It was just a series of things that happened that may have looked fortuitous, but was really the universe and their environment reacting to their desire to get to where they wanted to go. And so I'm meeting people, I'm making connections, I'm going to meetups, I'm you know, hiring consultants and trying things, and just a lot of failure. And all of this led me to finding mentors who I think they just recognized the desire to figure it out and were willing to provide a little bit more guidance to take me the rest of the way. 